Hi, I'm Jason Bellamy coming to you from Orlando, Florida and APTA's Next 2018 Conference and I'm joined by Jimmy McKay and Terry Malone. Uh, we've been doing a couple updates here from Next. You guys did though a very cool and interactive session that was pretty different than what you might normally find. One, it was in the exhibit hall, yeah. which is obviously unusual. Uh, there was a packed house, that was very cool. Um, but you talked about uh, knee and rotator cuff injuries and you had a panel of people doing it, but it was a different format. So first, Jimmy, you describe what the format looked like, and then Terry, I'm gonna have you talk about some of the people who are in the uh, part of the panel. Yeah, so a little different. Uh, we, we were actually reached out to, you know, a little closer to last year about doing a what would you do format with some experts in uh, various pathologies. And uh, my job was to have the interaction. Now we, we throw that term around a lot, especially at conferences. How do you get the, uh, the audience to interact? And really, remember those books when you were a kid to choose your own adventure? You know, what would you do at this, at I this do. point? Uh, go to page 319, and I always used to cheat. I would hold my finger and maybe go back if I didn't like where the uh, adventure was going. Uh, that really but, surprises all of us. <laughs> but I'm a cheater. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the experts in the front were able to uh, walk us through a, a clinical presentation, a case, and at various points, whether it be a fork in the road, a decision to make, a clinical decision to make, they were able to stop and ask the audience through various uh, uh, means of, of communicating back, show of hands, colored cards, what do you think the audience would do, or what sh what would you do? And the cool part I thought f for you guys, the experts were able to bring in. Okay, I understand why you, a quarter of you would go that way. Here's where we went, and here's why. That almighty why of why where where your mind was at that particular moment to to, to take away not just a protocol or or how something was done and what you should follow in the future. We're all autonomous practitioners. The audience we wanted them to interact and find out why. So Terry, tell me about some of the other people who were part of that and then and how that all came together. Well, when the uh, planning committee contacted us, uh, we, we basically said, well, what we'll do is we'll do a, a couple of cases with an upper and a couple of lower extremity. And then we kind of honed it down a little bit to be a little bit more focused on rotator cuff pathology with the two upper presentations. And the two lower presentations were uh, basically knee with uh, fairly high complexity. Uh, it worked uh, very nicely. The, the speakers were uh, individuals that are experienced speakers. Uh, the, in the upper extremity, uh, Gary Calabrese, who is at the Cleveland Clinic, uh, was able to talk about a case involving a relatively new process by which you, uh, it's going to sound uh, a little uh, scientifically sure, uh, literally it's uh, under ultrasound guidance, you basically go in and you have a device that uh, is going to basically debride and remove that that is being debrided basically with a quote sucking sound if you will I like the sound um, effects that was great okay and uh, it, it was it's a very interesting process uh, the case that I presented was basically involving um, when things go bad uh, basically breaking bad is a it happens to all of us and in this case it was one of our operating room nurses who was a very really high high level tennis player and a sequence uh, starting with uh, having a partial rotator cuff problem to a complete uh, surgery and then multiple problems thereafter. The two lower extremity cases, um, uh, Walt Jenkins, uh, who is uh, at Nazareth uh, in New York, president of the sports section, and Rob Mansky, who is uh, past director at Wichita State. Uh, and both of those were complex uh, in instability cases with um, multiple uh, reconstructive procedures at the knee. Yeah. And so it's great, and again, this is what you get by going to conferences like this, is a, is a chance to see the, this sort of stuff in action. And you know, uh, you talked about the decision-making process. You know, Rob Mansky at one point had something, he was talking about ACL injuries. And he basically said, you know, what would you use to find out if this person's at risk? And one was age, and one was uh, BMI, and I can't remember what the other ones were. And, he, and people raised their hands, and there was pretty diverse even, responses. Even, yeah. yeah. And he basically said, well, if you really look at the data, just age, just age, if we want to, as, in terms of risk factors, right? You know, um, that's all that's there. So, Jimmy, you're not too far removed, first of all, from being a student. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about you like to choose, you know, uh, choose your own adventure experience, yeah. but it wasn't that long ago that you were in those classroom settings, and is this just a better way of 
of getting the brain firing rather than just sort of being passive. Yeah, I mean, uh, w one thing I noticed, uh, I wasn't worried about the experts delivering, delivering their clinical insights. I, I always pay attention to the audience with a communications background, but the audience at a conference like this typically is in a sit and receive mode. They, they're, they're in taking information. So how do you get them to get out of that mode and be able to interact? Well, you have to have the experts who make them feel comfortable, and that's what these guys uh, all did. Um, and as you mentioned, this isn't what you, nor, you can't get this kind of anywhere else. You know, you, you don't get this by watching a video. You get to interact. We know that adrenaline is, is tied to memory. When you're raising your hand, you're putting yourself out there in a group like that. And when someone can say, I understand what you're doing there, but this is the gold standard, you're never going to forget that. I'm never going to forget that little gem that you just brought up. Uh, and you don't, you don't get this when you watch a video. What, the, the, the key, and I'm not even sure you guys know this, the key yesterday when you know there was great interaction is as soon as the presentation was done, so many people rushed, rushed the stage, your groupies rushed the stage, to follow up questions, why, why did you do that? That's a sign of a good presentation to me is when people are looking for more information. So Terry, I mean, this lined up nicely too. Yesterday in the McMillan lecture, Lori Hack really challenged people to challenge whatever your existing belief system is. You, that's, that's something we can do right now that's simple to become better clinicians. So from the, from the microphone side of it, you know, looking out at all those people watching them, was there an aha for you just in terms of the variety of their answers and, and what the engagement was like? What was that experience like for you? I think one of the more interesting things was we, we expected it to be a young audience but also, there were a lot of older clinicians, and some of them came because they, they know us, the speakers, but they also, uh, they like to see the pearl. They like to see the one or two things that that's an aha moment for them. For the students, it was very interesting because uh, all of us are educators. And one of the things that I think as physical therapists, uh, anyone who doesn't appreciate that a big part of your job is education, is missing the boat. Uh, you're educating not only your patient, you're educating their family, their friends, their future practitioners. I mean, that's what we do. That's what we are. And personally, for me, I, I have an engaging process. I, I try to get into the audience and, and do things. And it was really interesting because there were a couple of the younger students up front who were almost taken back at first, and then they opened up immediately, and then, then they wanted more information, et cetera. Uh, I, I think this format, it lends itself to a mixed audience more than we initially we thought. thought. Yeah, they, they kind of just gave us the prompt, and I think what, what, what you, to, to piggyback on what you had said, they were in that receive mode, and once the experts like uh, Terry and the rest of the guys were able to say, this is going to be, it's okay to be wrong, or it's okay to step out of that just sitting back and being a passenger, uh, and when they did that, they did light up, and I think it was a, we polled the audience. It was about 50% students, so you saw about 50% seasoned uh, clinicians. We don't say oh, seasoned clinicians, so we like to say. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, we're talking about one specific session, but in a, in a, a broader sense, that's what happens every time somebody yeah. comes to Next, yep. all this kind of stuff. Terry, um, slightly more seasoned than Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> you've, you've done a few of these. What, what keeps you coming back? What keeps the thirst for learning and knowledge in progress? If you're, there's a, a wonderful expression by an orthopedic surgeon, if you're green, you're growing, and if you're brown, you're not. <laughs> uh, and, and the idea being that if, if we're not growing, we're not doing what God put us on this planet to do. And uh, if, if you don't learn when you're around others and listening to, and what I try to do at Next, and the same at CSM, is I try to make sure I go to at least a handful of presentations that are totally outside of my norm. And I try to see what other people are doing in their specialty area or within their processes uh, related to education, as an example. Uh, I, I try to force myself to, that's an interesting concept. And if you get one or two pearls out of that talk, that's a, that's a great talk. So Jimmy, I mean, you, you bounce around these things all over the place, yep. whether it's as a learner, whether it's uh, as a podcast host or PT Pinecast and other things you do. I mean, what's the experience you always take away from these conferences? These conferences, you, you, you see uh, a lot of consistent things like the APTA staff, as I point to them uh, off camera right now. You see a lot of, uh, of, of the same people who show up, but then you always find new people to bump into in the hallway. I, I do something very, very similar as I try to uh, attend or interview things that are completely outside of my, my scope or my comfort zone. And then after you do that for 10 minutes, you know a little bit more. 
You know, if you g keep gathering those pearls, eventually you can make a really solid necklace uh, after a while. Uh, and I, I just love the fact that it, it, it changes each and every time. Each of these conferences, while they're a conference so they have similarities, they all have different feelings, all different vibes. So I keep coming back because, well, the, the hallways where you get to talk to people. That, it's the people, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's really the thing that draws us back in. Well, thanks to these guys. You know Jimmy does podcasts because he waves to people during the video broadcast. <laughs> he forgets that people can see him. Uh, for Terry Malone and Jimmy McKay, I'm Jason Bellamy, and we'll catch you later.